Bad questions annoy, good questions inspire. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to be talking today about the one key to better leadership, and that's asking better questions. So if you are a business owner, if you're a family business owner, this show is for you, and we're going to talk about that today. So welcome. So how about one key to better leadership is asking better questions. Are there other keys to better leadership? Yeah, of course. I think that there's lots of different keys to leadership, um, sp such as specifically the three pillars of leadership, which is trust, vision, and communication. Now, the are there other things? Um, sure. How about decisiveness? How about um, how about in having integrity? How about you know again just in being in alignment with doing doing what you say you're going to do. Um, certainly justice, having a sense of justice as a leader, all of these different elements are really important. But when it comes to the three pillars, trust, vision, and communication, those three, you cannot have two. One isn't enough, two isn't enough. You have to have all three. So I'll come back to that here in just a second. But remember, the whole context of this is bad questions annoy people, good questions inspire. So um, let, me, let me unpack this just a little bit so you can understand where I'm coming from in terms of being a better boss, being a better business owner, and having some leadership actually helps inspire them. And this is where I'm bringing, to, bringing into the conversation something I refer to as the pre-executive function. The pre-executive function is, is like you're acting like a business executive, but you're still the business owner. You're still very approachable. There's no glass ceiling. Like, like you're, you're working hand in hand, elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, to your workers and maybe maybe you're at the point where they're doing all the work but now you're just kind of you're you're tracking the metrics that's fantastic maybe you've got employees handling all four all four core functions of the business right the lead generation the sales the operations and accounting maybe you're just working up to that right where maybe you're still trying to do all four and you're trying to get some help on board right well that again the 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 all four of those functions the lead gen the sales the operations accounting this is where you're going to start to ask the questions of people who are doing those jobs. Or if you haven't quite thought that through yet, maybe these are the questions that you will be asking them when you get those people in place. So let's really quick unpack the three uh, leadership pillars, trust, vision, and communication, because you do need all three of those in order to ask these questions effectively. So let's, I'm going to do a, I'll do another separate video on the three pillars of, of leadership here another time, but in just a real quick synopsis of this trust, you have to have trust of the people that you are leading. You just have to, I don't care if you're leading a, uh, a soccer club, um, maybe you're leading a, um, a, um, you know, a, uh, well, a Bible study, right? Or maybe you're just leading your family. Maybe you're just leading, you know, you're leading your organization, you're leading your company, but you have to have their trust. If you don't have their trust, again, there's, there's predictable, there's predictive trust, and then there's vulnerability-based trust. I'm not talking about predictive trust, which is a much shallower level of trust, but the vulnerability-based trust is where they feel like they can be honest with you and you can be honest with them about what's going on. So that's the level of trust that I'm talking about is that vulnerability-based trust, not so much the predictive trust. The next piece here is the vision, right? You've got to know where this boat is going and you've got to be able to convey that to them, which is the communication piece I'll talk about here in a second. But that vision piece has got to be well-developed and clear. If it's not, everything else is going to get fragmented. You might have their trust and you might be able to communicate, but you're, there's no direction that you're sending them in. And that's why you have to have a clear vision. And that third piece is communication. And like I said, this is where you have to be able to communicate with them effectively. You have to be able to communicate with them clearly and concisely so you know where to head them. You know how to have conversations that are trust-driven and you know how to have conflict and you know how to to get out the best in them in terms of what they're able what they're able to do. So that is the the three uh, leadership pillars is trust, vision, and communication. But let's get back to again asking better questions as a leader. Well, asking better questions involves them. Now I'm going to get some specific examples um, that I uh, took from the, this book, The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. And again, this is one of my oldies, right? You can tell because there's gold in them NAR pages. These pages are yellow. <laughs> this one I think I picked up in the early 2000s and a really, really good book. 
and uh, it really does talk about more about the executives and acting as acting as executives. But I think for, in, in in the relation to the pre executive function, like I talked about, that's those those business owners that really need to start managing by metric and being a leader um, that is that is going to be effective. This is a really good book. Now, what I'm going to do now before I go into that. I want to make the, a quick distinction between individual-based questions and team-based questions. For those of you who are bringing together a team, for those of you who are trying to get a team to run the four core functions of your business, your lead generation, your sales, your operations, your accounting, if you are trying to put together a team, then the questions are largely going to be the same, but you may just be asking them of the team rather than the individuals. So there is going to be a distinction that I'm going to make here um, here at the end. And I'm going to reference this book now just in case I forget. But this book, Know How by Ram Charan, it's, uh, the subtitle is The Eight Skills That Separate People Who Perform from Those Who Don't. And the one thing that I really like about this book, um, there's lots of things I like about this book. And uh, there's a specific question in terms of managing teams versus managing the individuals is when you're asking individual questions of people, it's that ability to reframe you as the leader. You can take a piece of information and reframe it in another way. And I'll talk about that here in just a second, but I really like, there's there, this is such a good book. I know I get some some mid-level executives and some um, and some mid-level managers that watch my stuff. If, if I don't care who you are. You really need to read this book if you have a team and you want to be effective at, at any uh, in, at, at managing your team and getting the most out of them. That book, I would say, is probably the 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 update or the the next version or the the next book that you would want to read after you read Who Not How by Dr. Ben Hardy and Dan Sullivan. The Who Not How concept is, of course, rather than us entrepreneurs thinking of, you know, how can we do something. You should be thinking, who? Who do I need? Who do I need to get me to that le- that next level rather than how can I do that myself? And this know-how, this book is the next step after that book. So read Who Not How and then read that one. So the what I'm going to do is I'm going to list the questions here. I'm going to put these questions also in the description so you can use these questions yourself when you're asking and you're, in, you're interviewing your 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 direct reports so you can get the best information out of them. So I'm going to do the questions here and then I'm going to I'm going to give you the questions and then I'm going to I'm going to reframe that. I'm going to I'm going to prep you in terms of how you need to bring these to them. So let's get to it. So the first question I would ask is what should we know about your work? Now, or what should I know about your work? Again, if this is a family business and you're a husband and wife team, this is a question that you should ask them. What should we know or what should I know about your work? They're going to give you specific information that you may not know about the work, especially if you've been det- if you've been detached from the work for a while. You might have been doing it a while, and then you turned it over to them, and you th- you still think the- that it's being done in an old way, and that may not necessarily be true. Now, let me make a quick point about. Remember, I was talking about the three pillars of of leadership, right? And one of them being trust. If they don't trust you, they're not going to be honest with you, right? They're not gonna they're not gonna give you the information that you need. So it's really important that you develop and establish that trust up front, like like over the you know days, weeks, and months prior to asking this question, because there's not you're not going to be able to establish trust in you know and and you know just just so you can get the honest uh, honest feedback that you want from this question. So trust is absolutely critical that it's been built prior to asking these questions, especially this one, because they're not going to answer the question in an honest way because they just feel if they can't trust you, they're not going to, they're going to keep it super, you know, just very superficial. Oh no, everything's good. I mean, you know everything there is to know, right? They're not going to give you anything really, really helpful. So the next question is, what would you like to tell me about the business? This is also really good if you are at that higher level and you're managing by metric. And what I mean by managing by metric is you're just managing by the numbers at that point where you have certain metrics that are coming in from the all, from four core functions of the business, right? So you have metrics that are coming in from the lead generation piece, right? You're getting your lead metrics and your lag metrics. The lead metrics are the metrics that are based around your activities and the lag metrics are the results from those activities, right? So you're managing the metrics in both the lead generation function, the sales function, the operational function, and the accounting functions, right? So you should have metrics in all four of those functions. And when you're managing by metric, you're just looking at the numbers, you're looking at the results, and you you may not have your finger on the pulse of the business anymore. 
This is why it's really important to ask that question among the different people in the business. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up the context of reframing, like I mentioned from before from the book um, uh, from the book Know How, and that he mentioned the ability to reframe. And this is where you can get a real gold mine of information from, say, the accounting person. They may have a completely different experience or a different idea about maybe what's going on or what could go on better in the lead generation function or the sales function or the operational function because they're looking at it through a different lens. So use these people in, in not just the context that they're in, but the context of the entire business. And that will be a real gold mine of information for you. Uh, the next question is, what opportunities do you see? That's a pretty straightforward question and, um, and one that you can get, again, from all sorts of different areas of the, of the business, whether it's lead gen, sales, operations, or accounting. The next question is, what dangers am I blind to? Again, if you're, if you're disconnected, managing by metric, you may not necessarily see dangers that are coming down the pipeline. And this last question is, what do you want to know from me? And this is really good because, again, this will reinforce that trust circle where you're being a little vulnerable. They may ask you a question that, you know, you may have to put yourself out there a little bit and be vulnerable and answer it. And, uh, and I promise you, again, this is sometimes information that can be used against you, but you've got to be, have a little discernment, but also when you have their trust, you will know that this is stuff that you can, that you can put out there and it's not going to be used against you. So these are the four questions that I would, again, I'll put these in the description, but like I said, you need to pre-frame this and you should pre-frame all of these questions prior to actually having this conversation. My suggestion is you have it nowhere near any sort of evaluation or anything like that. If, let's say that you do a quarterly evaluation. My suggestion is you do it maybe a week or two after they've already gotten their evaluation and just say, hey, you've had your evaluation evaluation uh, last week. Hey, next week, I want to give you these questions because I really want your input on these. That way they don't feel like it's going to be held against them on a on an evaluation that might be coming up in a few weeks, right? They don't want, they, they, you want them to be able to be, to be able to speak freely and not worry about any re repercussions from that. So my suggestion is if you let, you know, again, if you do a, uh, a quarterly or semi-annual or annual review, um, I definitely would not go, if you're only having annual reviews, that is definitely not often enough in my opinion. So let's say that you're doing quarterly reviews. My suggestion, do it a week after, a week or two after they've had their review and that way there's no like danger of them thinking it's going to be used against them. Uh, the other pre-frame, again, I did mention give them the questions in advance so they can actually think about them and let them know, hey, look, we only get to meet, you know, only so often. I really want you to have these questions in advance because some of these questions, like, for example, what do you want to know from me? They may not know. it. That's a very, very broad question. And they may want to ask something that's completely unrelated to business. They may look at you as a mentor and they may want to ask something around your marriage. They might want to ask something around your faith or how you raise your kids or where to send your kids to school or any number of questions, right? Don't, and, and don't necessarily paint them into a box. This can, this is really, really important for you to answer any questions and be that leader that they need you to be. Um, again, for another question is what would you like to tell me about the business? Sometimes they'd have to think about what they want to say and how they may basically want to say it, especially if it's bad news. So don't set them up to fail. Give them the questions well in advance. Give them time to pre prepare. And if if coming up to it and then say, hey, are you, are you okay to meet in a few days? And they haven't even looked at these questions yet. Maybe you just postpone it because you do want them to be ready. Um, and that would be what I would say for the pre-frame. And one final thing that I do, and I do this on every single meeting that I have with staff, is I always start out with wins and victories. And it can be anything. It can be anything business related. It can be from their personal life. I, you know, um, you could share some wins and get the ball rolling. They can share some wins and get, you know, and, 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 and follow you in suit. But I always start that because it gets, it, it gets out of the habit of sitting down in a meeting and just getting straight into all the messy problems and, you know, lower, um, you know, lower, um, you know, lower conscious state, you know, lower states of conscious and the lower theme of conscious consciousness. I want to have an abundant uh, consciousness heading into those. So a lot of times I want, I want to know the wins, the victories, the gratitudes, like what are they grateful for? What are all the things that are going well in their life and get them in a positive state. That way you can have a really good conversation. 
So one other question, and this actually came from this book. Again, I mentioned this know-how by Ram Sharan. Um, this was such a good question and that these all of these questions can be asked not just to individuals, but also to an entire team at the same time. So when you're asking this, again, you've got to have their trust and, and they've got to be able to feel like they can speak openly to you. But here's a question that this is for yourself, for yourself as the business owner, as the leader of the organization. And ask yourself this question. I love this question so much. This actually came directly from the book. Are you psychologically uncomfortable dealing with your direct reports as a team rather than one-to-one? Now, what I'm saying is if the team is not not necessarily getting the results that you want, are you willing to hold them accountable as a team? Think of the greats in basketball like John Wooden or Vince Lombardi. They would hold their teams accountable, right? And they would hold the, they would hold everyone accountable as a team. So if one member wasn't performing, they held the team accountable. So this is what I'm talking about. It was, it's a lot easier to pull someone aside. And sometimes that is necessary to pull someone aside and say, hey, man, what's going on? But if someone's not pulling their weight and this is repeated and you've pulled them aside, you've tried to coach them one-to-one, now you're holding the team accountable, this can be really, really effective. But it does take some, it, it takes some cojones to do that. And if you're not psychologically comfortable with doing this, how can you get that way? And maybe, maybe you never will. Maybe you're just a person that just does not do conflict. That's fine. Maybe you should consider hiring hiring a manager to have those conversations or ha- hiring someone that can do this for you because you're just not psychologically able to. So that is everything that I have, everybody. I hope you did find this helpful. Uh, for more tips and uh, stuff like this, you can head over st- to strategicboardroom.com. Remember, this is specifically stuff for you, the small business owner, the family business owner, the entrepreneur of of any size. Because again, we are going to need certain people to help us get to where we want to go. And uh, we can certainly get there a lot faster with help. All right, everybody have a great rest of your day. And of course, we'll see you next time.